Today we're going to make a walnut dining table. I bought a slab of walnut from woodslabs.com. What I like about this site is that they show a picture of the actual piece of wood that you're buying. Shipping was free and all in I spent about $270 to get this slab. It arrived about two weeks later and looked exactly the same as it did in the picture. Now the most stressful part of a project like this for me is figuring out exactly how I'm going to cut up this big one of a kind piece of wood. I want to try to get a nice tabletop with two live edges out of it with as little waste as possible. Now whenever I'm working with expensive hardwoods I always make sure that the blades of my saws are nice and sharp. I switched out the blade on my circular saw with a new Diablo finishing blade. I raised the slab up on some scrap pieces of 2x4, checked to make sure that the blade was going to go deep enough but not so deep that I would hit the floor, and then made my first cut. I now had two slabs that were roughly the same length. Now this first one I'm going to split in half and it's going to be the two long edges of the table. I clamped a straight edge down to the slab to help guide the saw and I used a weight plate to hold everything nice and still. The second piece is going to serve as the middle of the tabletop. So for this one I'm just going to trim off each of the edges. Now the live edge on this piece has some pretty crazy angles. So in order to preserve as much of the wood as possible I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge sort of scooped out and I'll just make sure that I use that as the underside of the table. I'm going to join these pieces together using a biscuit joiner. Now to do this I'm just going to draw some lines on them and then use the biscuit joiner to cut slots into the sides of the pieces of wood. This is a really easy tool to use and I now can insert these little plywood biscuits into the slots to make sure that when I glue the whole slab together everything stays nice and even. It's always a good idea to do a test fit before you add the messy glue. I laid out four long bar clamps to clamp this slab together and I just brush glue on the inside edges of the slabs before adding the biscuits and pushing it all in together. I placed some heavy weights on top of the slab to help keep everything flat. I used parchment paper just to make sure that the glue that had squeezed up through the cracks wouldn't stick to anything. I let the tabletop cure for 24 hours before unclamping it. I used my circular saw to trim the short edges of the tabletop. I started sanding the tabletop with my orbital sander and 120 grit sanding pads. After removing scratches and marks from the tabletop, I then focused on rounding over the lived edges. I did this by eye and just tried to provide nice smooth contours while leaving as much of the natural formation there as possible. Once I had the shape that I wanted and had removed all the major scratches and marks, I then did a finish sanding with 220 grit pads. I'm going to use these heavy duty hairpin legs as the base for the table. Now what I like about these particular legs are that they have really wide brackets which is actually going to serve to reinforce the tabletop from the underside. Now I don't want the wood to split so I pre-drilled holes before driving in the screws. Now you have to be very careful not to pre-drill all the way through the tabletop. If you don't have a biscuit joiner or you just want to super reinforce the tabletop you can add metal mending plates on the underside as well. Now this tabletop has some knot holes in it that go all the way through so I flipped it over and I added some blue painters tape underneath these knot holes. I wiped away all the dust and then used my kiwi knife to clean out any loose parts that were in the larger knot holes. I mixed a two part tabletop clear resin together and then poured it right into the knot holes. For the thinner cracks in the wood I applied some blue painters tape first and then cut slots into it to help keep the resin off of the surface of the wood. I let the resin cure for 4 days before sanding over it with 220 grit pads. I removed all the dust from the tabletop with a clean rag and then applied Minwax's wipe on poly one layer at a time with a little bit of light sanding in between the coats. The resin looked a little bit cloudy after sanding but once I applied the poly over the top of it it cleared right back up again. I recommend three to four coats of this wipe on poly and make sure that you apply it with a rag and not a brush. When you really rub it into the wood 
the finish tends to come out a little bit thinner and it feels more like real wood, not like you're coating it in thick plastic. This is a surprisingly easy DIY project and when you look at the price of solid walnut tabletops, you can see that there's actually a lot of value here for what the materials cost. Different sized slabs of wood will produce tabletops of different sizes. This table very comfortably seats four people and in a pinch you could sit six people around it. For more information, check out our website and if you want to see what we're working on next or make some suggestions, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and be sure to check out some of our other Dwell Made videos and some of my own videos as well. Thanks. Bye.